Have you ever wondered what lies to the east of the Northern Kingdoms in the Witcher universe? We've explored Skellige to the west, and delved into the territories of Nilfgaard to the south. But what about the enigmatic lands of the east? Well join me today friends as we venture into the unknown, and unearth the secrets of these mysterious eastern realms, looking at their geography, people, culture, and the monsters that roam these lands. East of the Northern Kingdoms and Nilfgaardian Empire lie these mysterious territories, separated from the western realms by the almost impassable mountain ranges of the Blue Mountains and Tir Tokair. Here entirely different and exotic human cultures have developed, in relative isolation from those in the lands explored in the Witcher franchise. Our first stop on this journey is to the Korath Desert. This arid area, nicknamed the Frying Pan, lies far to the southeast of the Northern Kingdoms. It is a wild and hostile place, perilous to any creature not adapted to the lack of water and extreme heat. It's unimaginable for a person to ever cross it and survive, as they would soon succumb to the thirst, heat, or the monsters that inhabit this treacherous land. Legends say that the sands of the Korath Desert cover the necropolises and catacombs of a long forgotten race or extinct human civilization. The reasons behind their decline and disappearance from the pages of recorded history remain unknown. There are also no known fixed communities inhabiting this desert, but outlaw nomads do roam the land ambushing anyone who dares enter the deep desert. Nilfgaardians have attempted to colonise parts of the region, with insubordinate Nilfgaardian officers being assigned to the Magna Division, a group from the 4th Cavalry Army who patrols parts of this arid land. The desert is also home to gruesome creatures known as sand monsters, which have adapted to burrow beneath the sand and create pitfalls for unsuspecting travellers. This treacherous landscape, combined with its dangerous inhabitants, makes the Korath Desert a place of mystery and terror. North of the Korath Desert, we find the exotic land of Zeracania, known for its exotic culture, unique geography, and terrifying creatures. The land is home to a diverse population of humans and non-humans, who live in varied landscapes from lush forests and deep canyons, to steppes, deserts, and barren plateaus. The roots of modern Zeracania can be traced back to a fertile canyon where the locals believe that they were chosen by the golden dragon Zeracantament to protect and care for dragons. Over time, the matriarchal steppe clans surrounding the canyon formed the bulk of the Zeracanian nation, turning their traditions of dragon protection into a form of worship. In the past, Zeracania had limited contact with the outside world, but increasing interest in the lands beyond their borders, led to the establishment of the Feifel, a warrior order tasked with finding and protecting dragons. Traders, alchemists, and inventors followed these warriors, bringing new goods to the northern realms and Nilfgaardian lands. By the late 13th century, trade routes were well established, and western travellers began visiting Zeracanian lands sharing tales and legends about the exotic nation. Zeracania became a destination for refugees during the Northern Wars. This opening up to the lands of the West even led to the creation of a witcher school, situated within the East, known as the School of the Manticore. Zeracania's unique geography includes two distinct forest systems, one adjacent to the various mountains that populate this area, and another down in their fabled canyon. Here in these forests, one can encounter exotic trees with large juicy fruits. The land also hosts diverse and dangerous fauna, such as tigers, antelopes, and ostriches, as well as venomous basilisks and spiders big enough to trap full-grown elephants in their web. The Zeracanian society itself is predominantly matriarchal, with women holding positions of power as leaders, warriors, and teachers. Magic, alchemy, and medicine are practiced mostly by priestesses, and the realm's knowledge of these arts has made it a centre of expertise in the usage of explosives and other substances. Zeracanian warrior women excel in mounted archery and sabermanship. Their legendary marksmanship skills are the subject of myths and superstition, but the most destructive weapon, however, is the Fire Scorpion, a siege engine capable of shooting green fire and raising entire cities. The Zeracanian economy is based on a mix of herding, agriculture, and trade. The nation is known for its spices and silk, which are transported to the northern realms via land and sea routes. The Zeracanian Spice Company, headquartered in Novigrad, is one of the biggest importers of Zeracanian products, and some northern organisations even have branches in Zeracania itself. 
Continuing our journey northeast of Zeracania, we arrive in the boundless steppes of Huckland, which is primarily known for its fearsome horse warriors and their devastating invasions of the northern kingdoms. While Huckland's economy is largely based on the production and exportation of silk, with the smooth silk of Huckland being highly sought after in the northern kingdoms, the Huck people are renowned horsemen and archers. Their culture focuses on the importance of these skills from a young age, as children learn to ride horses before they can even walk. As a result, the Hark people become formidable warriors, combining their mastery of archery with their horsemanship to burn, slaughter, and feast on foreign lands. And so our journey through the eastern realms of the Witcher universe comes to an end. Which of these lands would you most like to visit in a future Witcher game? Are you interested in hearing about the mysterious lands to the south of Nilfgaard? Let me know down in the comments, and make sure to subscribe for more lore. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.